My name is Jack Knight Winters. This is Jack Frost University. I'm here in Boulder, Colorado. Sometimes I like to joke around with my friends. I like to call it New Hollywood because I'm trying to attract talented, intelligent people to this city. Um, I began my path of enlightenment in December of 2000 at the age of 22. I began attending non-denominational Christian churches in the Sacramento, California area. After a few years of praying, seeking, and knocking, I came to the conclusion that God does not limit His presence to a three-dimensional building with four walls and a roof. I left the church system behind shortly after, and I realized that there was a multitude of people out there who also came to the same conclusions that we are the church, we don't go to church. As time rolled by, I began to realize that the name of the game was vibrational alignment. And there's a lot of people these days looking into heart science and heart brain coherence, uh, primarily Greg Braden and those at the HeartMath Institute. Um, you know, that's, that's the name of the game, vibrational alignment. It's just getting your mind in tune with your heart. And that coherence uh, brings a lot of peace and a lot of happiness to people. Um, I no longer consider myself a Christian anymore, but I do remain friendly to Christians. Um, I do step foot into a church once in a while throughout the Boulder area, Boulder County area. I like to keep my finger on the pulse of Christianity. These days, I consider myself a ceremonial magician, uh, a sorcerer, a divinator. Uh, I, I like to divinate by studying cause and effect. And I consider myself the White Wizard of Boulder, Colorado. Shortly after I left the church system, I began studying magic science. Um, I, magic and science are the same thing. That's why I call, I call it magic science because magic is science and science is magic. It's the same thing. Um, I started studying magic science around the age of 22 and I'm now 40 years old. So that's about 18 years of studying magic and sorcery. And since that time, I've had this common reoccurring image that has been burned into my mind of a witch drinking blood out of a chalice. This seems to be some kind of theme to my life. Uh, I've also seen another image in my mind of a vampire drinking blood. And I never really understood what that meant. I just know that that image was burned in my mind. I've always been of interest. I've come across it in fiction, books, fiction movies, but I've come across it in a lot of books about magic. Um, there seems to be a a theme of sorcery and, and blood, blood work of some kind. And so I've come to some interesting articles lately, and I wanted to share this with you. One of the keys to understanding uh, the highest level of witchcraft and the highest level of sorcery, and one of the keys to understanding this epic battle between good witches and bad witches is understanding blood. Okay, um, so let me discuss this with you. So you may have heard these terms before, the elixir of life, also known as the nectar of the gods, also known as the fountain of youth, and also known as the keys to immortality. I'd like to put this document up here. This is an internet article that I found on the, on the internet, and it's about Peter Thiel, uh, who was one of the founders of PayPal. And he has this article up here. You can look and read this. Okay? And let me read this to you. This is what it says. Now this article is from Inc. Magazine. It says, Peter Thiel is very, very interested in young people's blood. The contrarian venture capitalist believes transfusions may hold the key to his dream of living forever. Now notice it doesn't say he's interested in adult blood or any other kind of blood. 
He's specifically interested in young people's blood. Okay. More than anything, Peter Thiel, the billionaire technology investor and Donald Trump supporter, wants to find a way to escape death. He's channeled millions of dollars into startups, working on anti-aging medicine, spends considerable time and money researching therapies for his personal use, and believes society ought to open its mind to life extension methods that sound weird or unsavory. Speaking of weird and unsavory, if there's one thing that really excites Thiel, it's the prospect of having younger people's blood transfused into his own veins. While the mechanisms at play aren't totally understood, he said, young organisms' blood, organisms blood not only contains all sorts of protein that improve cell function, somehow it also prompts the recipient's body to increase its production of those proteins. The effects seem to be almost permanent, he says. It almo it's almost like there's a resetting of gene expression. So we have this nation called Atlantis, and I often don't talk about Atlantis because it just doesn't resonate with that many people. Um, I hope that changes in the future. I hope people understand that. It seems like we would have the technology to, to come to that level of understanding. Uh, mankind goes through these... Uh, there, humanity on planet Earth has this, um, this heartbeat, this rhythm, where our awareness gets expanded. If you, help, if you have a rubber band on your finger, if you have a rubber band on your finger and you, you expand it outwards, it will stay expanded. And it will stay in that form, but only as long as you hold it. The second you let go of that rubber band, it's going to shrink back to its original form. Okay? And humanity is like the same way. Uh, without people expressing, without the right souls in these human bodies expressing enough interest in keeping mankind in an expanded state of awareness, they all shrink, uh, humanity shrinks back down to the three-dimensional level. Okay? The reason why, I believe, the reason why the last hundred years we've seen a, a heavy increase in awareness and, and expansion of our consciousness is because of the light workers. Light workers have come into human form within humanity and have made efforts to expand our consciousness on a global level. Okay? But once that interest is lost, mankind will always shrink back down to the three-dimensional level. Okay? And so there's this heartbeat within humanity. It expands and it, it contracts. It contracts and it expands. And right now, because of the light workers on planet Earth, we're going through a time of ex expansion, okay? The last time mankind has had this level of awareness was in Atlantis. And this technology and, and, under, and scientific understanding or bio understanding, you know, these biotech companies, are coming to the same understandings that we came to Atlantis, which is you can reverse the aging process with this adrenochrome. Okay, Adrenal, uh, adrenic, but it has to be through the blood of young people. Okay, you'll, you'll notice that article in Peter Thiel specifically states the blood of young people, not adults, young people. We came to this understanding in Atlantis that young people when their bodies release adrenaline, um, you can consume the blood and you can stay young forever. You can reverse the aging process. And this is how the, the gods of Atlantis became immortal. And you hear about the Egyptian gods becoming immortal. Well, the Egyptian gods were immortal because they came from Atlantis. Okay? Okay. But back then, we had this technology, and we were able to manufacture this adrenochrome in laboratories. You can manufacture anything any way you want. When we have science, the scientific awareness that we have now, you can do anything you want in a laboratory. Anything. You can create humans. You can create a whole new human race. You can create animals. You can create anything you want if you have an understanding of science and atoms and electrons, okay? There's, there's no limitations to what man can do. 
But in Atlantis, we were able to manufacture this adrenochrome, and we were able to stay alive forever. But here's the problem. Atlanteans misused the technology that they had, and they caused the flood of Atlantis. Okay, they caused this flood. And with that, all of the laboratories, all of the scientific instruments, and all of the understanding and the records of this science were all washed away with the flood of Atlantis. So no more laboratories, which means no more manufacturing adrenochrome, adrenochrome to reverse the aging process, okay? No more people. Okay, in Atlantis, we had 60, 80, 120 year old people walking around looking like 14 year olds in perfect mint condition. And it was fun, okay? But when Atlantis went underwater, okay? When the, when the, when the waters hit Atlantis and it went underwater, there goes all the science along with it. However, and this right here is the key to witchcraft and the key to sorcery, the highest levels of witchcraft and sorcery, okay? And this is what makes up the difference between a good witch and a bad witch. Some people, without that science, still understood that you didn't need the laboratory to stay young forever. You could just torture and traumatize and scare the fuck out of young kids and then make an incision in their arteries and drink their blood had the same effect, okay? It's one thing to manufacture adrenochrome in a laboratory and stay alive forever. It's another to beat children up and scare the crap out of them so that their bodies release this adrenaline and then cut them open and then drink their blood, okay? Whole different story. And so this is exactly what this epic battle throughout the ages has, has been about between good witches and bad witches. With bad witches not having access to those scientific instruments, laboratories, or resources to manu manufacture that adrenochrome, what they did was they literally started beating up and traumatizing and scaring young children, cutting their bodies open, and drinking their blood to stay young forever. That is what we call a bad witch. That's the least of what we could call them. The other group would be the good witches, those who take more pride in nurturing children, creating a brighter future for humanity, not being selfish, and taking a more long-term interest in planet Earth. And that's what a good witch did. A good witch would not participate in abusing and traumatizing young children just to stay young. And, and satisfy their vanity, okay? So, that's, that's the difference between a good witch and bad witch. And like I said, I'm explaining the highest levels of witchcraft right now. Immortality is something everyone has searched for. Um, so here's, here's what I see going on lately, and the connection that I'm making. And there's a few other people talking about this as well. There's a lot of, apparently, I have no proof of this, and it drives me nuts that I don't have the resources to go, like, because I like boots on ground. I'm a boots on ground kind of person. I know things are going on, but I, I need boots on ground. I need resources to actually see it with my eyes. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's going on because I remember what happened after Atlantis, okay? What's happening is there's a lot of children being trafficked. My guess is not so much from America, but from third world countries. Children are being trafficked to some people, I, what I'm hearing is they're being trafficked by the MS-13 group, and they're being trafficked to these, some kind of handlers that are literally be beating these children up and abusing them to get them to, to get their little bodies to release adrenaline, which makes the adrenochrome. And someone out there is consuming this blood in order to reverse the aging process. Okay, um, this is a very, very bad idea, and you can imagine what happens when an entire planet, or even a small subsection of the planet, begins traumatizing the youth and beating and neglecting the youth just so the other section can remain immortal. A very, very bad idea, 
It leads to uh, a very... Can you imagine living in a planet like that? Imagine living in a planet where, where it, all, all the children are being beat up and abused, and there's just this small group of cronies that are seeking immortal life, okay? Um, I see this heading in a very, very bad direction if this isn't dealt with. And, you know, the thing about this... <laughs> It's hard. It's not like you can explain this to police officers how important this is. They, what I found is that most people are just fucking stupid. People at the 3D level, I call them fucktards. People at the 4D level are religious tards. These people are just so consumed with shopping at the grocery store, or going shopping at the mall, buying a favorite outfit. They don't really care about the important issues. And even if you try to explain it with them, literally, I could walk around here in Boulder. I could walk around the entire city of Boulder and explain to them one on one what this means. Uh, adrenochrome, trafficking children, kids in cages. I could explain this to them. They're still not going to get it. They'll probably call the police on me for trying to. So you can't really go to the police with this. I don't even know if you can go to the federal government with this. Um, who knows who's a part of this? Kind of scares me to find out who's a part of this. Sometimes. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to explain this and get this out there. Uh, witches drinking blood out of a chalice is, a, is an image that's been burned in my mind. And I wanted to explain to people what exactly that means. Because you may have read about it in books. Fiction books, non-fiction books. Books about magic, ceremonial magic. Now you know the scientific reason behind that. Vampires, same thing. Yes, they're real. Yeah, vampires are real. They can live forever. Immortal vampires. It's not just movies. It's not just sci-fi. As a matter of fact, most sci-fi, if you give it enough time, actually becomes truth and reality. You know. So, so now you know. And I just wanted to make you aware of that. It should. Uh, it, it needs to stop. I think bad things are going to happen. I think some powerful forces are going to come from out of nowhere and start dealing with this on a level most people are not familiar with if this continues happening. Winner's out.